This is Angela Grayson from the Loving Life Fitness Podcast. To help others in their fitness journey. Hey everybody, this is Angela Grayson coming at you from the Loving Live Fitness Podcast. Today on the show, we have Emily Gerard as my guest. We're going to be talking about her journey through life and how she got involved in fitness and how she's helping everyone that she knows out there and new acquaintances get to their best life. So hi, Emily. How are you? Hi, I'm super good. Very excited to be with you today. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Let's go ahead and talk about your beginnings way back when. You used to be an insurance claims adjuster. Wow, what a boring job. <laughs> so you've gone from that to tell us about your journey in the beginning. Yeah. So I've always been very attracted to everything around fitness, nutrition, about helping people, about me, myself being healthy. And I used to be, as you said, an insurance claim adjuster, but that wasn't really my calling. So I've been doing that for four years. I've been making myself sick doing that, going to work, getting screamed at on, on, uh, over the phone and the stress and everything about it was really, really painful and really hard. And it wasn't really aligning with me, who I was and who I wanted to become. So at one point in my journey, I had to make a decision to change my life, change my habits, change where I wanted to go. So I just opened myself up to opportunities. And this is when the whole fitness training, et cetera, came into my world. So you were always into health and fitness yourself. You were one of those people who worked out or got involved in sports and sports nutrition, and you wanted to go in a different direction and help others with that, correct? Yes, exactly. I've been raised in a family where nutrition was really, really important. We had no sugar basically until we were teenagers. We we learned the proper nutrition from very early age. So I've been always into that. I've always been good in sports, everything that I was touching, I was trying. I've I've been like a natural athlete, if I can say. I was into training a lot, a lot before I decided to just jump into the journey. Yeah. Okay. So you were 24 years old when you decided to leave the insurance business and move into sports fitness nutrition you pursued an education in that area yes so i did a few training on nutrition to be able to learn athletic nutrition but the basic weight loss nutrition as well so i have certification into that and i had my uh, trainer courses back then in canada that i redid in the united states when i moved here yeah Okay, so that was in Canada and you got certified and then you had to come here and do it all over again. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Double education. Woo. And you wanted to specifically get involved with women, women who were either pregnant or have had their babies. Yes. Yes, exactly. Because when I started my journey, I was 24 year old, but I just had a baby myself. And I was trying to find a place where I could train with my baby. And every gym that I went to, they were like, no, you can't bring your baby here. It's dangerous for them. You cannot train with your baby. So you have to come without your baby. But I didn't have the surrounded and I didn't have the circle to take care of her while I was away. And I was breastfeeding as well. It was just impossible for me to work out as I would like to because I've never been like a runner or like doing bicycles. It wasn't something that attracted me. I really love lifting weights and doing like those type of workouts. So I was looking for a place to work out with my baby. That's when I was introduced with the Fit Club community plan, like what we're doing on the beach right now. Uh, And I asked the owner of the gym if I could give class of mom and baby. So I could myself work out, but have other moms in the same situation as me. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so this is how everything started. 
And this was at a fit club gym? Yeah, exactly. So it's a group class. And you were able to have your babies with you. What were you doing? Like lift ups with your baby and push ups with your yes, baby? Yes. And... Kind of. So <laughs> Tell me more. What did, what did you do? It's basically a workout. Well, I made the workout for women who just had babies. So it was very safe for them to be able to work out with the babies. I didn't want to have like any chance of hurting them. So it was made for moms. And but yeah, you could do the activities, the exercise with the babies. You could just leave the baby in the carriage, whatever, on, on, on the carpet. It was really up to you. I had some moms with the, the baby carriers. I had some mom with the baby in their arm. Other mom, just no baby at all. Just come with us for themselves and like work on themselves. So that was basically how we built that group. And around that, uh, we decided to do walks and other activities so moms could get together and get out of their house as well. Yeah. Okay. And how did you incorporate your nutrition education into that? As we know, usually when you are in postpartum, you had a baby. So you usually put on a little bit of weight. And you want to lose that weight after the baby to be to, to like optimize your, your results. And basically people think that by working out like crazy, they're going to be able to lose the weight, but they don't check what's in their in their plate. They don't check what they are eating. So usually they will just work out a lot, but have no results at all. It really came hand in hand. Sports, it's so important, but nutrition as well is important to be able to fuel your body, to have enough protein, enough carbs in, in, in your nutrition to be able to sustain those workouts, sustain the breastfeeding, just sustain your normal life. So basically what we were offering after the, the, the mom's workout, we were offering three wellness evaluation where we would uh, evaluate body fat percentage, visceral fat, hydration. Uh, metabolic age, all of those statistics. And from there, we would. this is where we were starting from. Okay, so you got their numbers down, figuring out where they were at and what their goals were mm -hmm. and keep on going. So if somebody came in and wanted to lose a certain amount of weight from having their baby, what did you recommend for them? It's really... A one-on-one -on -one process that so really depends on the person I have in front of me. So I would analyze what they were eating during the day. And most of them don't eat enough. So they probably, most of people in this world, eat like one or two meals a day. And usually overeat at night. So I would look at what a normal, typical day would be. And we were we would work around that. And what I used to do and what I still do is not a diet. It's really a change of eating habit to make sure they have every nutrient they need on every single meal they have. So make sure it's complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would create a meal plan according to their goals and according to their lifestyle as well. So for example, uh, an athlete will not eat the same way as someone who's not moving as much. And yeah, so it's most of, our, of, of my clients with doing a, a meal plan with us, we'll eat more on the meal plan than prior to the meal plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And get healthier. Yeah. Did you have them come and work with you regularly to get on their their physical part of their journey? Yes. Uh, I was. I used to give two to three class a week. Most of them would attend many classes a week which was amazing. So I would see them. It, it wasn't like it, it have never been a personal training journey. It was always a group training journey. So if I had one mom, then it was one mom. If I had 20 moms, then it was 20 moms. So it was always the community, the community side of it that I really enjoyed. So they would come, they would meet other people. So th they never felt alone. And uh, I would do their follow-ups for the nutrition and the evolution of like the weight loss or the journey or the, the increase of muscle mass, for example, depending on their goals every second week. So every second week we would see on scale if the meal plan is really good for them, if they are having a hard time, if everything is fine. With them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you say that you have a team of 4,000 people. Yes. What does that mean? <laughs> a team of 4,000 people. 
it can look big, but at the same time, it it's it's amazing because the way we work is really okay. You you are a client with me. You fall in love with what we are doing with the product, with the concept, with all of it, and from that you get to inspire people around you. You get to inspire people to start moving. You have an impact on the people. Uh, that surround you on the community, etc. So this is really how I was able to build a team. My main focus was really to help mom get more active and help other people around them. So I was I would start with them as clients and then down the road with their results and with the impact they have around them, they just bring me people. They They, they used to bring me people that wanted to get back on shape as well. And we would help them together. So it's really how I was able to impact as many people as 4,000 people, because I don't know personally, 4,000 people is a lot of people. It so it's by helping a few women that really love the whole process and bring me those other people. Yeah. Yeah. And so this was all started in Canada, and now you've moved here to Flagler mm -hmm. Beach, Florida, and you're starting all over again. How is that going? It is a big change. It is a big change because as how you can see, my first language is French. So I'm in a country where there's, even if I am able to express myself, there's still a language barrier. I'm not able to say everything like I would like to say. And coming here, I don't know anyone. When I moved here, it was only me and my family. So. I had to get to know people, get to meet people, go out. And we decided that we would start the same. We, we wanted to have the same impact as in Canada, but in another way, because I still, I don't have a baby anymore. My, my kids are older today than they were before. So the baby mama boot camp is like no longer in the, the equation because of that and because what we are using is the beach right now. So you can't bring a, a newborn baby on the beach, you know? Yeah. So it's a little different. So we have to adapt. Definitely have been a big challenge. But I mean, we're starting to have a pretty good impact and I'm very proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. Already. That's great. Yes. I haven't been to your beach workouts yet, but I've seen on Facebook the amount of people that are coming and attending. I'm sure every week it's different, especially now that the weather is a little bit nicer here. I'm sure you've got quite a few people coming out there and getting involved. And and what I like about what you're what you're doing out there is it doesn't matter what level the people are at. You've got people out there of all ages. So how do you keep track of all those people and uh, what's going on out there so that they can still get a good workout? Well, when they start. We, we tell them that it's for every level. So they have to follow their own pace and their own limitation. Mm -hmm. We ask them before starting to tell us if they have an injury or anything that needs to be taken care of. And we always give alternatives. So we are a few coaches in front and there's someone who's showing the exercise for advanced, more advanced people, uh, someone for intermediate people and someone for beginner. So this way... You make sure everybody gets the workout. Everybody knows what to do. Everybody know what alternative they can do and nobody gets injured. Everybody is safe. So that way, this is, I, I've always worked that way with the three different level. And this is why everybody gets to like push themselves, but not to a point where they hurt themselves because we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you're. Your husband is out there working right alongside you. Not very many people get to work in business with their spouses and enjoy it and enjoy each other. You know, sometimes that doesn't always work out. But you guys are out there together giving it your all. And I think that's just great. Yeah. Inspiring people to do their best so they can live a good life. So who really started all this? Was it you or was it your husband? We actually started the same month. Huh? This this is what is this is what's crazy is that we started the exact same month, but we didn't know each other. We yes. 
So I started, uh, well, we, we are from Montreal area in, in Quebec, Canada, and I was on the South shore. It was on the North shore. We were two hours apart and we started the same month doing the exact same thing. So we were working independently for a few years until we met each other, uh, five, about five years ago. So we met five years ago and then we started dating from there, but we were already in the world of fitness and nutrition and we started at the same time. Prior to all of that, Ray was a, a home trainer, personal home trainer. I was, in a, as I said before, I was in a completely different field, but we met through the whole fitness journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then continued together. That's cool. yeah. nice. So. Canada. I hear there's a lot of political unrest going on there right now. Is that one of the reasons why you guys left or no? Yes, this is exactly the reason why we left. Uh -huh. uh, we were basically in Canada. Everything was shut down for two years. Uh, Florida, everything opened after three months when COVID happened. But for us, we didn't see the end of it. And the the vaccine was really like there was a lot a lot of pressure around that and we didn't want to get it and definitely didn't want to give it to our children and they were starting to push it on children so we we felt the need of escaping the country in order to protect our right and what we wanted for our family so this is why basically we moved to Florida yeah mm. Okay. And why did you choose Florida? We wanted the sun. <laughs> We wanted sun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and this is where we ended up. I've never been to Florida before moving here. So it was really, yes, it was a blind move, but don't regret it at all. Okay. And how lucky Sladler Beach is to have you guys here. That's great. Okay. Let's, let's go back and talk a little bit more about you. And your fitness journey, because I know you've had some struggles that you had to fight through to get your body and mind where you want it to be. Yeah. Talk talk about that. Yeah, people need to hear these stories so that okay. you can inspire. Yeah. Prior to my beginning in the fitness, I used to suffer from anxiety, but severe anxiety. I used to have about eight panic attacks a day. I wasn't able to leave the house Uh, I was basically not able to have a conversation with a stranger that would make me extremely anxious and I was extremely t uh, shy as well. So basically before starting my journey, but I wasn't working. So the doctor uh, stopped me from working because of my panic attack. And I used to weigh 105 pounds before the beginning of my journey. I was really, really underweight. But it wasn't because I wasn't eating or feeding myself. It was because I had the anxiety and the anxiety made me uh, with my IBS, which is really related most of the time and to mental health. I was going too much to the bathroom. I used to go seven times a day, so I wasn't able to keep any nutrients. So I was eating and it was coming out right away. So I wasn't able to put on weight, even though I was eating like 4,000 calories a day. Yes. So at that time, I used to, I, I, I lived a lot of like body shaming uh, because I was very skinny. People would take the right of saying comments about my weight, about my look about me looking like a little kid, not having curves, being underweight, et cetera, without knowing what was behind all of that, like the sickness of anxiety. And uh, I would say that deciding to leave my job as an insurance claim adjuster, which was making me sick and start to really take care of my body, mind, body, and soul, all of it, slowing down my pace, respecting myself, feeding myself with the right nutrition, I was able to put on 35 pounds. So now I'm five, six, I weighed 140 pounds and I feel so good. So, so good. So there, there's one thing that we don't really talk about. We usually like body shaming is on the other side, on the overweight side, but it's also on the underweight side and it can, it, it hurts as much. And I lived a lot 
of that. Yeah. Was that ever since you were a child? I've always been very thin, very athletic. Uh, like I have a shape of a runner. So I, I, I'm built to be a runner. But yeah, so I've always been tiny, but skinny only for that part of my life where I was very sick with, it, with anxiety. Yeah. So, yeah. Did the anxiety start after you had your children or before that? I would say they start after my first children. When I was on maternity leave and when I was isolated, I felt really alone. I had my first kid at 20. I, I got pregnant at 21. So my friends were not at the point of having kids. I was all by myself. So it really started there. Yeah. Okay. So it took you quite a while to crawl out of that hole. Yeah. Yeah. But a long time until I took the decision that I needed to change something in my life. Yeah. So what does your diet look like these days? And I don't mean diet, diet, you know, as far as eating, how, how do you eat to stay healthy? Yes. Uh, well, basically, I try not to go in the aisles at the grocery store. I try to stay around. So where the fruit, where the veggies are, where the meat is, I, I really try not to eat anything that is modified. So I basically eat about five to six times a day, which is a lot. Uh, I would say I eat around. I don't count my macros or anything. I'm not for that for, for my person, for me. I know that some people, some of my clients want to count their macros and this is fine. This is how they remember like, okay, I need to eat now and that now. But for me, it's more instinctive. I try to put every food group in every meal. So for example, I break, I eat my breakfast, but there's always eggs in my breakfast or it's oatmeal with protein in it. There's veggies, there's carbs as well. So I don't cut any food groups. I make sure I eat the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you supplement with your sports drinks? Yes. Yes, I do. I take, uh, I take digestive product in the morning that really helps my IBS. It really, really changed something into my digestion. I went through going seven times to the bathroom to once a day, normal. So I think that helped me a lot to, to be able to gain weight, healthy weight. And I also have a shake after I work out. This is uh, definitely something that I have to do because with the way my, with the way my metabolism is, it's so quick. That if I don't give myself something as soon as I'm done, I'm going to lose mm -hmm. uh, muscle mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it true that the more we eat, the faster our metabolism is? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we have to keep on feeding our body, giving it energy. Exactly. And people think the more you eat, the, the more you gain weight. But it's, it's not true if you eat the proper food. If you eat the right food for you. Your body will just adapt to it. Your metabolism will be quicker. You will build muscle mass. It's just good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a lot of planning that goes into your food? No, not necessarily. It's just meal prepping two times a week. Oh, uh, you yeah. meal prep. Yeah. I do meal prep. I do meal prep. It's, it's important because if you're not ready and if you don't have the food, then you go to the restaurant. That's what you do. Or you skip meals. But you don't want to skip meals or you don't want to go to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. There are some ways you can eat healthy going to the restaurant. You need to like choose where you go. But definitely for me on Sunday and Wednesday, they are my day. So I cook chicken, beef, uh, shrimp, fish for the week. I keep all my rice together. I keep all my veggies together and I keep uh, my meat together. And depending on what I want to eat, that I make my meals for the next day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And does your, your family eat just like you do? Exactly like me. Okay. Yeah. Do the children eat five times a day? They do. They do. They eat snack. They eat breakfast. They eat snack, lunch, snack, and dinner. Okay. So you consider the snacks part of yes. the meal, the five meals a day. Yes. As long as the snack is complete. So as long as you have more than one group. Mm -hmm. One, there are more food, uh, food groups. So you don't want to have only an apple. You want to have an apple with nuts or you want to have an apple with cheese. So you have the protein and you have the carbs, for example. So it needs to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And what does Emily's uh, workout schedule look like for the week? Okay, so I've been doing CrossFit for the past few years. I've got injured exactly a year and a month ago, preparing for a competition. So I was basically off for a good nine months. So going from training three, two to three hours a day to nothing have been super, super hard on me. Very hard. Uh, but I started back at the gym as a beginner because I had to rebuild all my strength, my core, all of it to be able to lift heavier. And now I'm just starting again at CrossFit. I'm not going to make the same mistake of overtraining like I used to do. I just love my sport. So I used to just push myself and enjoy and love it. But yeah, so, but now it's, I train about four times a week. I don't want to go into the excess like I used to. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So you go to a CrossFit gym or you do this on your own? I go to a CrossFit gym okay. uh, at Bearcat. Uh, I go only once or twice a week and I go to Planet Fitness the other days. Oh, yes. I've seen you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So when you were younger, did you, you, you already said that you didn't have any sugar till you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your parents. How did they influence you in your life as far as health and fitness? I think they have been the best influence. When I was young, uh, I find it, I found that hard to see my friends with like snacks of chocolate bars and little goldfish, all of those things at school and me, it was like carrots and cheese. I was like, what's happening? And not even this small, the little cute carrots, like the long carrots cut in pieces. So when I was young, I didn't really understand why they would do that, but that was the best decision they could have made. Both of my parents are athletes. So I've been raised with athletes. Uh, my dad used to play handball. I don't know if you know. Yeah, yes. It's not okay. yes. popular anymore, but he used to play handball at a very high level. My mom too, that's how they met. Uh, but my mom runs marathon now. She's almost 60 year old and she runs 42 kilometers. And she's just like, the best shape of her life. You see her from the back and you're like, okay, she, she must be 40, but no, she's not 40. She's almost 60 right now. So yeah, I've always had great example and I followed their example. Very good. So sometimes children don't want to do what they're told. Yeah, <laughs> but they weren't just telling me, they were showing me. Yeah. So children will do what you do, not what you tell them to do. So that, that's the thing that I, that I find with, with my children, they, they replicate everything you do. So if you do good things, then they will do good things. Like my three-year-old does burpees, squats, she, she moves, she comes to CrossFit with me. Sometimes I just turn around and she's doing, she, she's just running in, in, the, in the living room, but she's doing sprints. And she's telling me, I'm doing CrossFit. <laughs> That's <laughs> cute. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to be your uh, little gymnast, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> were you ever involved in gymnastics? If not, what kinds of sports were you in? Uh, I was in gymnastic when I was young. Uh, up to, I would say, a nine-year-old where it was the competition level. My mom was like, there's no way we're doing that. So I stopped when I was at the competition level. Uh, she put me into trampoline as well. I loved it. That was amazing. Um, I did also soccer, so competitive soccer for a few years, and then badminton. Badminton have been my biggest sport, I would say. I was really, really good in badminton. Yep. So that that was the sports that I did. Yep. And do you do any of those anymore? No. No. None of them. Badminton, you have to find the partners and the gym, but... Yeah, uh, I really enjoy that sport. Yeah. Gosh, I don't even know if they have badminton around here. You don't hear anybody <laughs> talk about that anymore. No, exactly. Back in the days, it was a thing, but now, I don't know. Now it's pickleball. Have you ever yeah. tried that? No, I've never tried. Yeah, that's that's becoming quite popular for all ages. 
I know every year here where we live, they have um, pickleball comp competitions. Okay. Yeah. So there's teams going on everywhere. Teams, clubs. Yeah. Palm Coast area, Flagwood Beach. So that's that's a fun thing to get into if you want to try that. Probably yeah. similar. You know, it's a racket sport. Yeah, I should well, try that. As long as your shoulder's working good, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, part of CrossFit, trying to keep that body strong. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully with no more injuries. No. I hear about so many people getting injured in CrossFit. Why do you think that is? What can you say that might help others out there that want to get involved in CrossFit but are worried about injury? First of all, without having the proper form, they try to lift way too heavy. Uh, I think you should really focus on your form before starting to load up your bar and push yourself too hard. This is the main thing, the bad form or the pushing yourself too much because you look at your you the, the person beside you and you're like, wow, they are lifting heavy. So you try to push yourself, but to a limit where you just can't go, you know? Mm -hmm. And we are, th there's a lot of uh, blood pressure, but you get very encouraged into lifting heavy while doing CrossFit. This is what's dangerous. Yeah. The hype. The hype. The hype, the, when you're in the momentum and you're like in the workout, you just want to go, go, go. That can be, yeah, damaged and, and dangerous. For me, when, when I got injured, it was the day before the competition, the day before the, my, my rest prior to the competition, the last day, the last workout where I tried to lift a little bit heavier to be ready for that lift than my back. I should have respect my body. And not try to push it over my limits. Mm -hmm. So you injured your spine? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And you're feeling a lot better now. Oh, yeah. Definitely, but I'm taking it slow and easy. And I'm doing it for fun, not to compete anymore. Oh, there the you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, competition always changes everything. Everything. If you were to give our listeners a goal to reach, what would you like to say to them and how can they put effort forth to reach that goal? I would say a goal without a plan is just a dream. You need to set up a plan. You need to know where, how you're going to reach that goal because if you don't plan for it, you're not going to achieve it. It's very important. But one other thing that is major is don't try to change everything at once. Go step by step. Because by going all out, what's going to happen is you will be motivated for one week, two weeks, and then after you'll go back to your old habit and you will feel like you're failing. And you don't want to feel that because this is the number one deal breaker. You want to have little small success along the way so by starting slow, by starting smart, you will be able to attain that goal. But just trust the process. Mm -hmm. Trust the process because if, for example, you want to lose 30 pounds, we all want to lose fast. I want, I want it out in a month, but how many years did it take you to put on that much weight? You need to respect your body in order to keep the result for forever you need to change your habit so by trying to go too intense then you'll just do the yo-yo and go back to your old your old self yeah mm -hmm. and what about motivation how do you um tell people to stay motivated if they start losing their motivation because life throws things at us right mm -hmm. yeah Everybody uh, experience life <laughs> eventually. Uh, motivation is nothing. It, it has to do nothing with success. Motivation is just a feeling of like, okay, I'm going now. I don't feel motivated every day. Like this morning, I, I went to the gym. And I was like, oof, I don't feel like it this morning. I'm tired, but th it's discipline. So you have to work on your discipline, small little goals. And 
by building your self-confidence as well. Every little win will build up your self-confidence. So by doing what you said you would do, then you will go to sleep. You will be proud of yourself. And this is how you will build discipline. So it's just try to remember why you started. Mm -hmm. Try to remember where you want to go. One thing that really works well with me is a vision board. And I mean, like I analyze my vision board every day. I go in front of it and I talk to my vision board. It can look weird, but this is how I was able to build everything that I've built in the past years by talking to my vision board and by changing all of those little stepping stone goals that I had to an achievement board. Mm -hmm. As soon as I was able to reach, for example, a stepping stone, losing five pounds, for example, then you take the five pound and you move it to the achievement side. So you get proud of yourself and that will keep you going. And most of the time people will just have the vision word, which is amazing, but you just want more and more and more without, without just being proud of what you did. Yeah. Okay. Never heard of an achievement board, but a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we don't realize all the things we've achieved until you sit there and you take a look at it, right? Exactly. Those were yeah. once, once a vision and now they're achievements. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Good advice. And then why not working out with others, you know, to have the camaraderie, right? The energy level, knowing that you're going to uh, meet somebody for a workout so you can't not go because they're counting on you right? Or even a trainer, a coach. Talk a little bit about the the benefits of those. Yes. Well, basically you become the average of the five people you surround the most time with. Your trainer, if, if your circle is not necessarily a good circle of influence, your trainer will be and will be an amazing influence for you to reach that goal that you have of being healthy, of feeling good in your body. So by rubbing shoulder with that person, you'll be able to get where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So this is why accountability is one of the more powerful things uh, in order to, 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 to achieve your goals. Though so you have someone waiting for you. You have someone that you know at 10 a.m. is waiting for you. You'll go. If you have no one waiting for you, you might be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to sleep in today. So that this, this makes a major difference. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yes, absolutely. And you've proved that with, with your followers, your group, yeah. right? Your, your people that you've helped, they're bringing others to you now when they're, you're helping them. Uh, their friends are trying to help them. It's a community. Why not use that community to your advantage? Exactly. That that community is free. It's free, and they need they need you, and you need them. So it's it's really a win win. It, it's it's amazing. It's winning all together. So much nicer to win in a group than to win by yourself. Mm hmm. Yes. So twenty twenty four is around the corner. Um, not everybody makes New Year's resolutions, but what's what's in the future for you, Emily? Any anything new? Any changes? Any ideas? Honestly, it's keep building what we are currently building. We want to have a major impact. We want to reach up. We have a goal, a vision, as a team to reach 150 people for before the end of 2024 at our beach workout. Uh -huh. So, yes. This is the goal, and I am sure we will be able to to reach it. It's a lot of work, but it's it's such a this is such a great impact that we can have make people moving make, make people feel better in their body. So that's really the main main mm -hmm. main for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe doing this podcast will get some word out to uh, a lot of local people. More people will come and see what's going on over there on the beach at, what is that, North 7th Street, a one a correct? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and, and tell us about your business. Let's talk about that a little bit, too. Why not, right? Yes. So, basically, we open a smoothie bar uh, on the beach. 
uh, to be able to meet up. First of all, it was really to create a community and to meet up with clients. So our place to do the wellness evaluation. And as, as you probably know, we include some supplements into our meal plan. So a place where they can try the products before buying them. Because so many times I've, I've ordered things online or I've ordered things that I've been recommended to me, spend $100 and I get it and I'm like, oh my God, I can't. I yeah. can't. This is not good at all. And so it's it's really a place where they can try and taste and see if they like or if they are about to skip a meal and they are in the area, they can stop and have a shake, a meal replacement shake in order to just like fill themselves with proper nutrition, good things, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is really a place that's a one-stop shop where we do free wellness evaluation, where we meet our clients, where we do meetings, uh, where we do um, presentation as well, nutrition presentation, little activities. Uh, so we, for 2024, we, did, we really want to be involved in the community and we're trying to get uh, known as much as possible as the healthy place in Flag de Vichia. When is your next nutrition meeting, informational meeting, and what is it about? Usually it's the uh, third week of the month on Tuesday, but now it's Christmas. Yeah. So we are skipping December and we will start again in January. Uh, usually it's really about nutrition. So explaining people how they should, what kind of plates should they, they make, the myths about nutrition. We're trying to break the diet cycle of like trying to eat chicken and rice and broccoli because it doesn't have to be like that to lose weight you know and that's what we think we need to eat so it's really to try to educate people about good healthy habits yeah mm -hmm. beachfront nutrition on the corner of 7th street and a1a yes cute little place and i see now you're you're putting up a outside terrace yes 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 Give you a little bit more space. People like being outside, being able to see the ocean. Yeah. We have such a spot with the sunrise in the morning. Just, yeah, prime location. All right, Emily, anything else you would like to uh, tell our listeners about yourself? Well, no, just believe in yourself and you can achieve whatever you like. You just have to set your mind into it and be surrounded by the right people and keep going and forget about motivation because that doesn't worth anything in your whole process is really it's it's really discipline that will get you going and that will build your self-esteem okay well thank you so much for being on the show i know people are going to enjoy listening to what you've had to say and hopefully come and visit you out there on the beach or at your beachfront nutrition okay thank you so much thank you This is Angela Grayson from the Loving Life Fitness Podcast. To help others in their fitness journey. It's time to wake up. Here we go.